Hey guys, Timmy D with DroneMappingTools.com and in today's video, me and my sidekick Minnie, she's right here somewhere, we are gonna go over and show you the complete PPK workflow using the Mavic 3 Enterprise. Now, we're gonna show you the Mavic 3 Enterprise, but this is going to apply whether it is the Mavic 3E, the 3T, the M300, uh, maybe using the P1 on that, um, the M30, I think. I'm not as familiar with the M30. I shouldn't just categorically include that. Um, I think even the old Mavic 2 uh, RTK Enterprise. So anyway, the workflow is going to be the same across all these different drones, but because of the price point on the Mavic 3 Enterprise, it is becoming very quickly one of the most popular drones that people are gonna buy for doing mapping and uh, construction type uh, aerial surveys and imaging with. So anyway, so I wanna show you today the complete workflow, not just a segment. We're gonna come out, we're gonna cover everything. Before I go into the next section in the field, talking about uh, what all my steps are, I'm just gonna do a very quick run through in case you just wanna take this and move on to the office processing. So there are four steps in the field. Step number one, set up your base. Do not forget to start logging. Man, I have done it. It can happen. So it's, it's vital that you do not forget to start logging because if you do, well, that just kind of screws the pooch. If you're setting up over an established benchmark or control point that the surveyors have established ahead of time, or you're establishing your own control point uh, for future flights that you want to reference, the antenna height is critical. You must have that. If you are not over or establishing a control point and you're not coming back, it does not matter about your antenna height. You do not have to have it. So just know that. And there's a quick shaky video of the base station I'm using for this uh, mission today, which is the Emlid M2 on an Ardu Simple uh, NGS calibrated antenna. So a uh, nice little setup that's inexpensive. And so let's go on to step number two, set up your rover and start it logging. Even if you're gonna be checking your ground control points, you know, 20, 30 minutes down the road, Go ahead and get your rover turned on and logging immediately after the base station. And one thing I'm just going to go ahead and mention a little side note is that every time I take ground control points, I always take photos. Now, look, back early on, um, you take pictures when you would go to um, match up your ground control points. Uh, with your flights and there was no PPK or RTK, man, those points could be all over the place, right? So especially if you did not so much the arrows. Now, there are some times when I, I usually do the front point of the arrow, but if it's worn down and not defined, I might actually do the back corner of this arrow or do the inside corner. A photo will always tell me where I was. Now, often none of these pictures are going to have it, but I will be in the um, crosshairs of a parking lot line. And that, and so you got a little four inch square area. By the way, y'all see my sidekick Minnie there? She's always there helping me out. She's a good pooch. But um, you got a little small area and you need to know on which inside corner of that cross that you were sitting on. Then having pictures of these control points will always give you a reference and know you which intersection of line or that you were on, okay? All right, moving on to number three, fly the drone. And of course, it could be an RTK drone, which this is doing the Mavic 3 Enterprise. Man, that is a fantastic little drone. But you could also be using, uh, say like an old Phantom 4 Pro with a Topo Drone PPK kit on it. Some people might have the Mavic 2 Pro with the PPK kit. Same, same principle is going to apply here. So, and remember, time is always your friend in GNSS logging. So if let's say you're doing a very small area and you've got a two minute flight, man, I would have your drone out in the wide open. Don't take off from right beside the building or somewhere. Find a nice open spot, put your drone out there, 
turn it on, let it sit five minutes before you take off. And this is especially true for these tiny little short flights. Um, let it sit there. Then after you fly a three minute mission, if it's that small, just let it hover in the air. It's not gonna hurt anything. Let it sit up there and hover. Cause again, time is your friend on log files. I think that it's very true for your base and rover. GNSS receivers, and the same would be for the uh, the drone GNSS receivers. Of course, when we're done, we're going to shut down the rover. Then the last thing we're going to do is shut down the base. So the base is always the first thing we turn on, start logging. It'll be the last thing that we stop logging and turn off. And um, that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and now move into the recording that was out in the field. If you want to skip it, do, and then uh, we'll just move right on into the office recording. I've had several guys over the last week and a half, two weeks, ask about the workflow with the Mavic 3. And to do PPK processing, you have two bare minimums that you must have. So when you buy the Mavic 3 drone, you must also have the RTK module on there. That's an additional uh, $709. So if you buy just the drone without this module, you will not be able to do PPK processing. And the reason is the additional files are not logged in the image folder that are needed for doing the processing. So bottom line is you got to spend the extra $709. Uh, $709. You also need a base station, but your base station can be a core station or it can be your own local base. So here in the United States, we have a plethora of core stations all over the place. Now, there are certain parts of the country where base stations are not as prevalent, they're not as close, and so you have a much longer baseline, and that can affect the accuracy of your PPK. But because these are um, dual frequency receivers, you can have a much longer baseline for doing PPK than you could when using in the old days in some of my old videos where we had like the, the MLID M plus and you'd put that on a Phantom 4. Well, that was a single frequency receiver. And so it required a very short baseline in order to maintain good accuracy. It, it worked really well, but it, it did require a very short baseline. So when you go out and you're gonna fly a hundred acres, you will have a couple different scenarios. You're gonna go there and there's not gonna be any control that's been established. In other words, the surveyors have not gone out that are responsible for doing everything there. They have not set up control, okay? So you go there, there's no control. You could go there uh, and there is control that already exists and you must tie in to that existing control because there have already been um, existing control points. Uh, maybe they've already surveyed the sewer drains and all that stuff. And so you have to tie into control so that your final product is going to match up with that. So that's very important. And you could go there and there's been no control, but you're actually going to establish a control point yourself. Maybe you're gonna be responsible for coming back and doing multiple missions there. And you need to have a control point established so that that is the reference moving forward. Um, so that is really your main three scenarios that you're gonna run into. So I've measured the antenna height on the base. So if we had a situation where we're over a known control point or we're going to establish our own control point, I am going to actually enter, uh, let's go into the base, we're gonna add a point. And so you can see our timer is at two minutes, it doesn't matter. For a base, all I wanna do is record my, and the pole height is, the antenna height is 1.667. That is to the bottom of the antenna. So now I'm gonna measure, it's called base. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just hit accept because I'm not, this is only so I have it for a record. So I'm gonna hit accept. We are done, the base is logging. So let's go back to um, I'm gonna go back to my receivers. I'm gonna go to logging. I'm gonna make sure 
that we are in fact recording and we have seven minutes and 51 seconds, okay? The very next thing I'm gonna do is I need to get this Rover and I want it to start recording. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna close reach view three. I'm gonna switch over to the, the Rover on my Wi-Fi, okay? <laughs> okay, we're done there. Now I'm gonna open up the Reach View 3 again. Here's my Rover, click on it. And all I'm gonna do at this point is I want to start logging. So I'm gonna go to logging. Again, you see it says single up here. I mean, I'm doing no RTK whatsoever. Let's look at our settings, UBX, that's good. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit start recording. So I started my base first. I've started my Rover second. And even if I'm not ready to go out and do ground control points, I wanna get this thing logging. I don't care if it's an L1 or an L2, time is still your friend when it comes to GNSS logging. So start it logging, I'm just gonna let it sit here. I got this thing, these battery packs on here. Again, look. This, this is not the most robust, um, it's not the most sexy looking GNSS outfit, but it works, it works and it's inexpensive. 700, about $750 for the M2 and the Ardu Simple NGS calibrated antenna that, to use with it, excellent, excellent results. So we're done for now. We're now going to, I'm gonna throw some targets out, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and put some targets out, just a few. And then we're gonna get our drone up in the air. I'm gonna fly the mission. And then we'll go and survey our ground control points. And most of the time, I will go put the ground control points out and then, and I will survey them at the time I'm putting them out. That way they're just, they're out, they're done. If you, cause if you, if you have a very large area, sometimes you end up spray painting uh, a, a point down. You wanna mark it then so that it's done in March. You don't want to go put a bunch out, come back, fly your mission, and then forget where some of your points are. So I generally speaking will always, especially on bigger sites, if I put a target out, it's a grassy area, I will, I survey them at the time I put them down. That way, if I forget to pick them up at the very end, I just lost a target. But the worst thing is you go out and you put targets out, they're in your photogrammetry mission, but you forgot to survey them. That's bad. And the second thing that's, well, that's bad. And what's even worse than that is if you ever forget to log on your base and your rover, that is, that's very bad. I mean, it's all wasted because if you, if you forget on either one, forget the base, everything is toast. Of course, you could use a core station, but no, I'd have to go back and redo it because I've already explained earlier. For me, I have to have an on-site base and an on-site rover for just uh, to confirm accuracy and confirm that what I'm handing in is what it should be. <clears throat> All right, so we are done for this part. Let's go ahead and get the Mavic 3 fired up. Well, first I'm gonna go put some targets out. We'll do that and then uh, fire the drone up, fly it. We'll go survey our points. And then uh, after that, we'll be ready this evening. We'll go back in, go to the office and do PPK on everything and then uh, process it in one of the photogrammetry softwares and that'll be a wrap. When you are privileged to be able to fly and have a parking lot as part of your uh, area you're flying, man, these, these turning, big turning arrows make very good control points. But now, if you're gonna do the front of the arrow, like this one right here, the front of the arrow uh, is not very defined. So you, it's already been worn down so I'll find a good, on this case, the back side of the arrow is, is actually, it's good. So let's go ahead and we are ready to start our, uh, our survey. We're gonna add a new survey. This is gonna be uh, M3E PPK uh, Rover, okay, done. Meters, we're good there. Save it. Now we're ready to uh, let's add a point, and we need to go back and change our point to two meters because we are at two. Okay, done. Save that. Right now our time is at two minutes. So I'm going to measure, and so 
the reach view app is going to just do a timer for two minutes and after the two minutes it'll bring up a screen for me to accept that and I'm going to go around and we're just going to rinse and repeat I'm going to do this very same thing at every ground control point so I'm going to use some of the arrows here in the parking lot I've got three targets that I put out at different elevations so that's going to be good to see and that's really it so we'll do that there's no need for you to walk around with me for every point so I've got one two three maybe four five I got about five more to collect and then we'll come back we will record shutting down the log files and putting everything up and then we'll take it back to the office all right all right we are done i've taken uh 11 points so let me go ahead and back out of my uh so look right here you can see here's all all the points i took and so we're, we're going back out of there so the next thing we got to do is i'm going to shut down the logging on the rover first always shut down your rover first so i'm going to go to receivers i'm going to logging And we've logged for 56 minutes. And so I'm gonna go ahead and stop that. Okay. And take just a second and that'll, you'll see that down here compressing in the background. And we'll just use cellular data. And so now that this one is, well, once this one's done, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this unit off. But even though this one doesn't have an internal battery, I will still go ahead and shut it down. So let's, um, right here, I'm going to hit shut down and shut down. So you could actually email yourself. So if I wanted to go do my survey and I wanted to share it, we can share it directly from this app and we can do it through Gmail. You can upload it to Google Drive. There are multiple ways to do that, but I'm going to wait till I'm in the office and I've got a better recording set up so I can share the screen and show you that. But now what I want to do is, let's close this, let's go to my settings, and you can see now we're back to my base, okay? So now let's go and open up ReachView 3 again, and we're going to connect back to the base, okay? And now we're going to go to logging, and probably about 58 minutes. Oh, okay. I started that several minutes before. So your base log should always be longer and encompass your, your rover. I mean, I, most people will know that, but I'm just telling you for those who don't. So now I'm going to stop this one so it can save. And same thing, you see it compressing in the background and boom, it's done. That's it. So I'm going to shut this one down as well. I'm going to hit shut down. Again, there's no internal battery, but it'll still turn it off and it's done. And then we'll pick back up when we get into the office. So before we begin doing the full walkthrough and the software and what have you for processing, I'm still going to do a very quick overview. So step one, you're going to download your log files from your base and your rover. This will be demonstrated later, but it's done via email, Dropbox, or Google Drive. And I'm just going to assume most of you guys are using the MLID uh, RS2, or some people might even be using the MLID M2. Same, same for, for both of those. But again, I will show you that. It is so, so easy to uh, send those files through email, Dropbox, or Google Drive when you have your um, when you have internet connectivity. So that's step one. Step two, download the CSV file, that is your, that's your survey file from the phone or tablet that you did the survey on. Same thing within the ReachView app. Very, very easy to send that file via Gmail, Dropbox, or Google Drive. So number two, step three, we are gonna do PPK processing on the base. I think I've said it in the field video, doing this whole process this is a, a one trip out this does not require multiple trips out to the field so you're going to go out you come back first thing you're going to do is ppk process your base and then after that you will have the ppk coordinates and from that you will do ppk on your rover and on your drone using the new updated coordinates for your base unit now the ppk on the base can be done with Emlid studio it can also be done with 
uh, easy serve, which I use. And then also for those of you that are going to use or are using Topo drone processing software, you can process your base using Topo drone. And I'll just mention this in the coming months, they will be coming out with an update to uh, process the stop and go for the MLED units. So the Topo drone processing will be a one stop software that will do all of it and do a very very nice job so hopefully first quarter next year february march maybe uh that'll be done and released so i'm excited about that and let's go ahead and go to number four now that you have your ppk coordinates for the base you're going to do ppk on your rover using the updated coordinates so um and you'll use your inlet base as the reference um so you obviously had to use a core station to first do the base, but now that the base has new PPK coordinates, it'll be the reference for the rover and for your drone. Um, let's see what else. Now, if you have not already done so, you need to copy the RTK image folder from the Mavic uh, 3 Enterprise or any of the RTK uh, drones, and they will contain images along with four GNSS files. So there'll be four GNSS files in there along with your images, copy the whole entire folder. And then number six, you will do your PPK processing on those drone images using Topo Drone Processing. And again, we'll be using the local base that we had processed previously with the updated coordinates. And from that, we will now have PPK um, updated coordinates for the images and topo drone processing, or I'll just call it topo processing, will make a duplicate folder of your images and it will update the copies. So that way you always retain your originals. And then at whatever point you can get rid of one set, but during the initial processing, it will make a, an extra set, an extra copy of the images, put them in a subfolder, and that's what will be updated to bring into Pix4D, Agisoft, or whatever you use. And uh, step number seven, process the updated images in your photogrammetry software and output your deliverables and mission is complete. So again, I'm fixing to now walk through it in uh, screen recordings and what have you. So guys, if you find this helpful, give me a thumbs up. If there's stuff you wanna see, if there's questions you have, post it down below. I am uh, the owner of DroneMappingTools.com. We are a U.S. distributor for Topo Drone in Switzerland, a very good company. Lots of new products have already started coming out and coming out in the next uh, month. So check out our website if you need any LiDAR equipment, anything like that. We will take excellent care of you. So anyway, we're going to now move into the next segment. All right, so we are back in the office, and you know the first thing we need to do is download the files from the Reach unit. So it really doesn't matter if you got the Reach RS2, the M2, like I used in the collection today. And so I have opened up the the app on this is the Reach View three on my iPad, okay, and. The reason I opened it up is so that I could see the IP address, the 192.168.0.162, okay? So now, let's switch over to a browser on my PC, and all of these, we're all on the same Wi-Fi network. And I'm just going to show you that on, matter of fact, let me switch back. Oops, one second. Okay, going back over to the iPad, in Wi-Fi, if you have a known uh, Wi-Fi network, then it will be connected, oh, here we go, run a little slow. It'll be connected to the, the top one up here. So you can see this is my known networks and networks that are available. And so as long as the reach unit in your computer are all connected to the same Wi-Fi network, then this works very nicely. Okay, so I'm going to close that. 
So again, I am going to, let's switch back over to the browser and I'm going to go to 192.168.0.162. Okay. Now that's going to open up my MLID control panel. We're going to go to logging and I want to download the log file from today. And this is the base file, okay? So I'm going to download this. And we're going to come here. Okay, so in this particular folder, the Mavic 3 PPK tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and create my folder structures uh, for saving this. So I'm going to do new, we're going to call it um, MLID base. Emlyn Rover, Mavic 3 Photos, and that's it. The, the files we need for PPK will actually even be within the Mavic 3 uh, DCL folder. Okay, and let's see what else. Uh, actually, we'll go ahead and I want to create one called Cores because we're going to do some processing with just a cores unit. And actually, I'm going to create one called cores long distance. All right. And that's really it. That's all we need right now. So this is the base file. So I do want to put it in the inlet base. I'm going to hit save. And we're going to do the same thing. I'm not going to record it. I need to power up the rover, save it. But I'll tell you what I am going to do is, give me one second. All right. All right, so we're back to the iPad. Let me bring up. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so now I have my folders. And so this is the, the SIM card, or excuse me, the uh, SD card I took out of Mavic. And you'll recall we named the mission today. I love, love, love on the, like the M300 and now the Mavic 3, how the, the file folders are all named by date. So the old days of, like it was with the Phantom 4 Pro. And that was kind of a nightmare when you had large um, jobs or every time you do a new flight, it, it saves it with the date and the time, et cetera. So just very, very nice. Um, so now what we want to do, oops, let's uh, go back here. And... Mavic 3 photos. And what I'm going to do is I want to drag this over and copy it. Copy here. And this will be our photos. And for those of you that do not know, so in the field I mentioned you must have the RTK module. Because if you do not have the RTK module, the only file that is generated is this, uh, what I call the MARC file, the MRK file. I don't even know what the purpose of the, the Mavic 3 Enterprise generating the, the MARC file um, when the RTK unit is not installed. I have no idea, but you can't do anything with it. In order to do PPK, um, the one file we need is this OBS file, the observation file. So, but all you all every time you do a new mission, a new battery, in other words, you power it down, power it back up. Every time you will have a new folder with a new date and time. And within that, for the entire flight, you will then have these four files that will be included. Okay, so I'm just going to show you. I've already powered up the rover, and you can see the IP address. 
on that. So we're going to go ahead and bring that up. So this is going to be a complete tutorial. So I am going to make 0 0.111. Right. We're moving slowly but surely. All right, go to logging, and now we're going to download this one. And this we want to be in the rover. All right, we'll look up here. You can see. I should have turned on my uh, okay now you can see my mouse click sorry about that right up here showing our our progress ah oh, I didn't mean to cancel crap all right let's do it again Rover, yes. And while that's downloading, I want to check. Um, oh, it's not here. It is in our um, RTK settings. Yep, 5 hertz. So this is set to 5 hertz, where my base is set to 1 hertz. So therefore, the base log file was actually... Uh, a good bit smaller. I mean, it's sitting stationary, so there is absolutely no need for a base unit to ever, which it'll be in static mode, uh, to ever be higher than one hertz. But the rover is in kinematic mode, and then I have that set to five hertz. And actually, when you're drone, I think um, most of the time, the uh, GPS units on the drone, I think those are recording in 14 hertz. So uh, anyway, that's why there was a difference in the file size. So we are still downloading, as you can see. I don't know. So I'm, I'm a little ways from the, the Wi-Fi on this. So it may be that my, um, maybe it's done. Let's give me one second. We're going we're gonna to check that. All right, so there's there's the folder or the file. It's in there, the rover, and then there's my base. So they're both there. All right, well, that's it. We'll um, move on to the next step, and I'll pick up recording in just a second. All right, so one thing uh, I forgot, we need to export our CSV files for the from the survey. So I'm on the iPad. And, uh, and before I do that, man, I'm just going to tell you guys, I'm going to do a separate video on uh, using this app right here. It's Flight Plan Go. So I use this with an ADSB receiver. And for you guys that do commercial work, big areas, and um, need to be have a better awareness of any air traffic, this is far superior to... Um, like the ADSB on the Pilot 2 app. So anyway, I'm going to do a separate video on that. Okay. But now let's go back into a reach view three. Okay. And so we're going to go down to our survey and I had my base, right? So I'm going to come and click on the three dots over here on the right hand side. Then I'm just going to click on the word export. I want to export a CSV file. There's other file formats you can work with, but I always work with CSV. So I click on that. And now, man, one of the easiest ways to do it, now you can do Dropbox. Um, I don't know. There's just a, a multitude of ways to do it. But Gmail, if you have Gmail, it works so easy right here. And we're just going to call it um, base file. All right, and base, boom, okay, we hit send. Done, okay, now I'm ready to do the rover file. 
Do same thing. I'm going to export. I'm going to click on CSV. We want to, I'm going to choose Gmail. And again, there's other options. You can do Dropbox, Google Drive, um, and there are other options. Uh, you're, if you're doing this kind of stuff, you ought to be able to figure that part out. Okay, and this is going to be the Rover file. And again, we'll call it Rover. Just so we've got something there. Hit send. Done. Okay, so now I will be able to just download those into the folders from, from email. So those files will be there when we're ready. All right, so we are just about ready to start processing. The only thing we need to do is we need to download our cores files, and that will be actually used later at the at the end of the video. I think I've already mentioned that I will show you how to do uh, PPK processing with the Rover files using Imlid Studio, but we will do that at the very end. Um, I'm going to just show you the PPK process itself. The, the whole workflow does not change. I mean, you can use various software, but the workflow I'm showing you is, is going to be identical um, regardless of the software. I mean, there can be a few little changes, but all in all, the workflow is the same. Um, but anyway, so I'm just going to go ahead and show for people that need to use a core station, and maybe you are using Inland Studio, then this is kind of the process you'll go through. I'm using EasyServe. It's very good software. Um, now, I'm right in South Haven, so I'm just south of Memphis, Tennessee, and you can see with this uh, circle at the ZME1, this will be the core station that I generally use to PPK my bases. And so this is a 250 kilometer circle that you see around. And one of the things I mentioned yesterday out in the field was that some people in the U.S. have a plethora of core stations. And if you're further out west, matter of fact, let me just kind of zoom out. So this is where, I mean, you can just see how many there are. Now, look. Even down in my state here in Mississippi, we don't have a bunch in central Mississippi. This is kind of a barren area. But when you zoom out, you can just see where where they all are. And then you get out here in parts of Colorado, probably New Mexico, Nevada, um, Arizona. I mean, look, I mean, you guys have core stations. It it is sort of similar to I'm up close to Memphis, so I do have some up here. Um, but there are just areas where they're they're kind of sparse, and in other areas where man, they're just thicker than flies. Um, so anyway, that's um, we'll talk about that later in the video. So again, coming back to Memphis, I'm going to download the ZME one, and then we will go over to uh, Batesville. That's a decent distance because what I want to show you is well, if you're in an area where your core station is far away, we're going to compare the results of having a close core station versus one that's much further away. So the ARBT. So let me go ahead and let's download that. And so this is for yesterday's attempt. Yeah, from yesterday. And I always just do a 24 hour download. ARBT. Okay. I'll do both and get it. So earlier I was doing some work. This site is moving extremely, extremely slow. I do not know why, um, but the the NGS website is crawling today. Just extremely, extremely slow. I'll tell you what, I'm just going to go ahead and minimize that for now. Now this is the folder structure. I, I just I cannot remember if I showed this earlier, but I'm going to have this will be for the local core station that's right close to me. This will be for the one that I'm trying to download right now, the one that's further away. Then we have um, the Inlet Base, the Inlet Rover, and the Mavic 3 Photos. Okay, so that's that's really the folder structure. Man, if you stay with that, it keeps everything nice and simple. The files are there. We don't need to replace those. 
But you see, that's where we would go in order to do that. Again, I'm using Easy Serve at the end of the video, and I'll either do it at the end or I will do a separate video that specifically shows you how to do this in Emlid Studio. But for the sake of just walking through the entire process, we're going to use Easy Serve because I can go back and forth between WGS84, NAT83, State Plains. I can uh, move back and forth very easily with this program. So here we go. We're going to go. First thing we need to do is we need to do PPK on our base unit. Okay. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to drag in my UBX file. And I've mentioned it, but I'm going to mention it again. The I'm not worried or concerned with the antenna height. Okay. If we are occupying a control point that has been established before we go there, antenna height is very important because now we're using the elevation of the benchmark and that has to be accounted for. Antenna height matters. When you go and it's a one and done, you go out, you're going to fly a site, you're not returning and you're not occupying a benchmark, the antenna height of your base does not matter. So in this case, it's not going to matter. So, but I am going to go to sites. One thing I need to change, this program is, I have it set up to default to the Reach RS2. And in fact, this was not a Reach RS2, it was the M2. And so I'm going to import, and this is using the Ardu Simple, um, this one right here, the 3B, it's an NGS calibrated antenna that, excuse me, that I have uh, on the Reach M2. Very cost efficient, but very good, good setup. Okay, so I'm going to click on OK. And I'll do OK there. And one other thing I want to do is um, we're just going to do stay with L1, do the L1 uh, frequency only. That is always a cleaner um, option. So I had the base out there for a while. So let's do uh, tools. I'm going to do process auto. Now, this is going to pull in the ZME one. We were just looking at that. That is my closest uh, core station. And so we do have a fix. I'm going to go here and there's my data. And you can look at the um, uh, it was on the previous screen. I was going to give you the distance on that. I mean, this thing's probably eight miles from here. Very close. All right. Now, uh, we're going to switch back over, and I'm going to bring in uh, the rover and go ahead and do PPK on our rover so that we'll have that done before we start working on the drone flight. So I want my my Reach M2 to be to to actually be used. Oops, let's go back at observations. I want this to be used as a reference. I'm going to say use as reference. I'm going to do OK, and I'm actually going to get rid of ZME1. Because when I do post-processing on the drone flight, I want to use the same base for the drone flight as I do for uh, your rover doing your ground control points. That's very important. If you want the utmost accuracy, you need to use the same base station. So let me go ahead and delete this. Remove. Yes. Okay. Now, let me run this. All right. This little program here. Now I can uh, go up one, go to my rover. Okay, so on the rover, I'm going to bring in the CSV file, and I did show exporting that out from the tablet, from the iPad. So I'm going to drag it there, and we have meters selected, and my pole height was in meters, okay? And now I need to bring in the UBX file. I'm going to drag it in here. And then I'm going to click Generate. It's going to create an XML file right there. And I can minimize this. Now, now I can drag in this XML file right here. And it'll create all of my uh, sites, all of my GCP observations. So give it just one second. And then we'll go ahead and do PPK on this. And so now what we're going to do, we're going to export this out, and then this will be used. We'll bring this in to uh, Pix4D 
after we do PPK on the images. And let's go to sites. Now one thing I'm going to change, my program by default will go to um, showing it's an RS2 antenna when in fact it is a the Ardu simple. Okay. I'm going to do okay. Now actually let me let me see if I can change all these at one time. Uh, properties. Yep, I'm do okay. Give me one second, I'm gonna see. Mm -hmm -hmm. No, it didn't. I gotta find out. I normally don't have to change those, so I don't know. Um, well, I always use the reach RS2. So let's just, we're just gonna do okay. I'm just gonna go down through each one of these. Now I need to find out how to uh, batch change them. All right, everything has been updated. Now I am ready to process. I'm going to go to Tools, Process Auto. And I had 11, 11 points here. So we'll go through. And once this is done, I can export these out. But I just, for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to export out in uh, NAT83, Geographic. And so everything, I had 11 fixes. Here they are. So I am in right now, uh, space, Mississippi West. So we're going to change this. I don't want to be in Mississippi West because most people, if you're using um, Inland Studio, you are going to be in uh, NAT83 Geo. So let's do selector. Go up. Geographic right here. Okay, so here are our points. Here's everything. So actually, I'm just going to go ahead and save this. So I'll have a um, just a whole entire list. And we're going to call it NAT83 Geo in Geoid18. So I can have a, a text file that I'll have both my ellipsoid and orthometric height. So I'm going to hit save. But now, I'm actually going to come here. I'm going to do tools, export, sites, and let's verify. I want to export out all my PPK ground control points, and it's going to be in ellipsoid height. Okay, so I'm going to close that. I'm going to do okay. And uh, we're going to call this. No, that is incorrect. So give me one second. That's the wrong one. So we want to do uh, lat long. So I'm going to do edge soft lat long. Let's make sure in position geographic. So that way we do have lat long. Height is an ellipsoid. I do not want to do orthometric. So I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to close it. Yeah, we'll go ahead and save that. Now when I save this file out, it is going to be NAT83, and I'm just putting it in the file name so that it is for reference. NAT83, um, geo for geographic, and then um, blah, 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 geoid18. And really, it's in meters also, so that's good. I, I like to put that so I just know everything, especially if I export out multiple files. I like to do that. So it's save. Okay. All right, so we can, I'm going to close that out, close this. We are now ready to move on and open up the Topo Drone processing. This is hands down the best software on the market for doing PPK processing on your drone flight. Um, you know, there's others out there, but Topo Drone is the best. I mean, I've, and I'm not saying that just because I sell it and Yep, full disclosure, yes, I sell um, our company, dronemappingtools.com sells TopoDrone Processing. I was a user of TopoDrone before our company ever became a reseller, and I'm very proud to be a reseller because it is uh, an industry leader in the software and the LiDAR and all the systems that we sell, top of the line. Excellent, 
excellent quality. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is come in. The difference is PPK processing in this software is for people that have the Topo Drone add-on modules that you added a PPK kit onto like the Phantom 4 Pro, the Mavic 2, the Air 2S. I mean, there's a couple different consumer grade drones that you add a PPK kit on and now you have very good quality and excellent uh, accuracy for a, a, a consumer grade drone. The RTK post-processing is for the DJI RTK drones. So that's going to be now the Mavic 3 Enterprise, the M300, I think the M30. I don't, I don't know anything about the M30. So I think that the Mavic 2 uh, Enterprise, I believe, that was with RTK, and for sure the Phantom 4 RTK. So this is what is for all of those. So the first thing I'm going to do is go here, and I'm going to say, um, bum, 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 open up uh, my folders. There it is. So I'm going to hit select. Okay. And it's going to come over here and tell me there's 99 photos in that folder. So it's good. We need to know uh, how many images and events. There's 99 of each. It's always good that that matches. I mean, once in a blue moon, something happens. Um, and not so much in the, uh, I've seen that in the, uh, like in the, with the kits or people have other drones. Um, that's where you have issues that the, the events does not match the photos. The RTK drones, man, that's, it's always going to be a match. All right, so we have 99 of each. The navigation file, it is always best, in my opinion, to use the base navigation file, not the drone navigation file. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to go to my base. Go in here, uh, and guess what? There, I have to. We have to first bring in the UBX file here, and then it will convert it to Rhinex and have the so you'll have the OBS and the navigation file generated at that time because I logged in UBX, which I think is best. So I'm going to select the base. Let's go back here, Emily Base, and there's the UBX open. Okay. And this is just the Rhinex header um, coordinates. We're going to update that to be the PPK coordinates. So that's very important. Now we're going to go back up here and we're going to add in, uh, there's the navigation file and it's in the reach, the Emlid base. So I want to use that one and not the navigation from the drone itself. So the next thing is we need to update these coordinates. So let's... Um, Let's see here. You know what? I put it in the rover. In the rover post-process. Here we go. All right. So this is going to be, there's our latitude. Let me minimize that. So let's update that. Oops, control V. Okay. Now let's do our longitude. and ellipsoid height. Okay, again, antenna height. We did not use antenna height on our base, so the value we have for our base height was not including an antenna height, so we'll leave that at zero. These are NAD83 coordinates. See this right here? Oh, there, NAD83. Even though this says WGS84, it in fact is positively going to be NAT83. So you can just leave it at WGS84. I'm not worried about trying to do any type of projections uh, within uh, topo drone processing. We're just going to leave it set the WGS84, but in fact it is NAT83 and I'm going to click start. And so when we do, it is going to go through and process the log file. And up here in the top left corner where it says Q1, that means that is a fix. So that's just the solution, which, you know, for the drone, it's almost always uh, a fix. It's flying in the air, and um, it's almost always a fix. If you had a case where part of it was Q2 um, as a float, that you can still have very good results uh, with interpolation, even if part of the flight was, in fact, a float. So now Topo Drone is making a copy of the photos and updating the EXIF data 
within the copies. So it's I think it's very important and critical to retain your original photos, do updates to a copy, and then once everything is processed and you know everything is good, then you can either delete the original, delete the copies that you actually process from, that's up to you. But um, TopoDrone will in fact make a duplicate set and then update. So we are done. So we now have everything processed, it's done, okay? So now I am going to uh, close out TopoDrone processing. And I wanna mention this, in the coming months, I don't know um, how soon Maxim and his crew will have this ready, but I believe they are going to, you can do static processing. So I did static processing using EasyServe. Again, I have that. You can do static processing right here within TopoDrone processing. You can also download the cores station data from within uh, TopoDrone. I will do a separate video that just walks through just the features of this, not I don't want to get into that now because I'm just doing the whole PPK workflow. But forthcoming in the couple months, they also are going to be able to do PPK processing on the MLID uh, units. So this will be a one-stop shop. You can use TopoDrone processing for everything, your base unit, your rover, and of course your drone flight. So I'm very uh, excited and looking forward to that um, being added to the software uh, in the near future. It's going to be, uh, I mean, it'll be the only software you need. So looking forward to that. I'm going to minimize this, minimize that. So we are now ready to go into, uh, I'm going to use PIX4D. Okay. So we'll start PIX4D. All right. Took a quick break. Here we are. We are in PIX4D and we are ready to start a new project. Uh, 12, 10, Mavic, PPK, um, using PPK. So let's do next. We're going to add our images. And so come down here. Uh, Mavic photos. Remember, it, it, uh, TopoDrone Processing created an output folder. And then within that, there's the updated tags. So this is what we're going to bring in. I'm going to do a open. Next. Okay. Very important step. The original coordinate system is not WGS84. PIX4D and even other uh, photogrammetry software will just default and say your images are WGS84. That's because when they come off a drone, I mean, that's just what, what they are. But we know that we have done PPK and that it was NAT83. So we need to change this. Otherwise, well, you're going to be off in horizontal and vertical by a good bit. So I'm going to uh, do advanced settings. I'm going to do from a list. And I know that it's NAT83. So 2011, actually. And this is the, uh, we're going to do the geo. This is NAT83 2011 geographic. That's exactly what I want right there. That is what these images are when they um, were processed in topo processing. So we got that. I'm going to go ahead and do OK. So that is the origin. And now let's go to next. And now it says, well, what about the output? It is, again, doing WGS84. I don't want that. We're going to, let's do um, advanced. I'm going to do from a list again. And I'm just going to stay with NAT83. 11. Now, uh, let's see. Do they have? Well, guess what? There is no... Okay, so uh, okay, I am going to. I'm going to go ahead and go with Mississippi West. Okay, and then we uh, 93 Mississippi West. Okay, 
and I'll leave it in meters and we'll be okay and then I will re-export the coordinates in easy serve out in state plane coordinates so we're gonna go that route and we'll do next I mean everybody that I do work for that's what they want um, and I'm, I guess I'm surprised that the geo version is not in this known list. So anyway, okay, so let's do next. But in, when you're using Pix4D and most other um, photogrammetry software, the, the output format and your ground control points need to be in the same uh, CRS, the same system. So I'm going to do 3D maps. I'm just going to do finish. And we're going to start. I will let this run. We'll come back. We'll take a look, uh, bring in the ground control points, and see how well everything lines up. All right, while that is processing, I'm going to change this over back to uh, Mississippi West. So I'm going to do selector, and we're going to come down to state plane. And I'm going to do... Mississippi West. Okay. Now I'm going to do two things. Save it. That 83. Mississippi West. G0818. Hit save. Okay. Just so I have my base coordinate and everything else for future reference. And now I need to export sites and this time I do need to go back to my CSV state plane I want that ellipsoid height yes I'm gonna do okay and state plane and 83 Mississippi West it is actually in meters, so we're that's an, not the norm, but hey, we're gonna roll with it, okay? Um, bum bum bum, and well, it's ellipsoid height, so GOA doesn't matter here. All right, so we're gonna do save. And we'll close, minimize that. And we're just about done here. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so let's turn our cameras off. So now let's go ahead and bring in our um, ground control points. Some new project. And let's import. Hit browse. I could have just done quick access. All right. Mm, CSV. Should be this one right here. State Plain, West. Okay. 3D GCP. Very good. And we'll hit OK. All right, so here are our um, ground control points. So let's go ahead and look at some of those, see where we are. All right, now, folks, I'm going to tell you something. That right there, that's good. So let's go all the way, all the way down. And we got a few right there that are off. But, I mean, that's in terms of um, hitting, the, hitting the mark, this is this is really good, really good. I mean, I hadn't even matched anything up. They're just there. Let's let's go back over here. Okay, same thing. Really good. Okay. Let's look at some of these. So this was kind of on the outskirts, and then this is down in a in the little bit in the hole. Okay. So some good now. You know, we've got some. We're starting to have a little variation here. 
But overall, the in the report, this would still be very good once we tighten that up. But that's where it's good to have a ground control point. We're out here on the edge, um, not going to have as much overlap from this side over here. So, and then let's look at this one. You know, we start to, that's still, I mean, that's, that's good. That's good. Um, I need to go through and mark all of these. And let's go over and look at some of these. And you can see that. That is, that's outstanding. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is we're fixing to, uh, I'm going to save this project, save project. All right, then I'm going to bring in, I'm going to pause. I won't let, walk you through all that. We're, we're going to bring in the RTK uh, data, and I'm going to see how does it line up to our ground control points. So we're going to do the same thing. So we're bringing not the PPK, but we're bringing the RTK, and let's just take a look and see how, um, how it shakes out. All right, so the RTK um, set of images has processed and in this particular case it was very impressive so it is really almost virtually identical to the PPK so you can see this particular point looking down again I haven't marked all the photos but you know you just you look at where they're hitting and the um, the errors are going to be or the residuals on this will be uh, probably virtually identical. Now what we're not being able to know is um, on elevation. So if I, oops, here we go. I mean, but they're, they're, they're hitting like, whoop. look on there and tell that's going to be really, that's, that's kind of perfection. So anyway, so in this particular deal, uh, scenario that I did, RTK is coming in very, very accurate. You remember I was on that inside corner. Well, you won't remember, but I took pictures. And I'm going to paste up. Um, I'm going to try to import the photos of these different uh, ground control points just so you kind of see how I do that because it's important to take photos of every one. So there's never, ever a question, particularly on this one right here, okay? This one, you're on the inside and you're going, well, gee whiz, what, what corner, if you forget and you want to know which, which inside corner was I on, was I in fact over here? Now this one here, because the data is very tight, I know it's this corner, but let's say you have a situation where you're off, you're on the line. I mean, at that point, you really do need your photo uh, to be able to reference back and know which inside corner you uh, surveyed. So. Anyway, uh, I'm actually very impressed with how well the RTK has matched up to the PPK because the RTK um, base for this is in Nesbitt. So it's about five, six miles south of here. And then the core station that I use for PPK, well, that's about eight miles uh, to the north. So both are very, very close. Um, but in this situation here, the RTK was great. Now, look, you're going to have situations where this is not the case. You're going to have cases where you're flying in a remote area and you don't have good reception and RTK is not reliable. Um, so that's uh, the fact is a PPK workflow will, it's not dependent upon a uh, cellular connection where when you're flying and relying on RTK, that's exactly what you're dependent upon. And if anything happens to it, well, you're you're kind of screwed. So you can you could have an RTK workflow where you fly RTK, then you um, if everything's good, you still need ground control points. You got to have checkpoints, uh, and I shouldn't say ground control. You just have to have checkpoints. You got to have checkpoints to validate because if I was surveying this um, for of one of my local engineers or surveyors, I'm not going to turn it into them unless I've got checkpoints all throughout here uh, to literally validate that everything is 
is tight and where it should be. Um, because you could, let's say you had just a situation. Let's go back and look at this particular ground control point. You know, these are all tight right here. We come down. Now we've got some variation over there. Um, these right here on the friend, this one and this one on the outside, a little less accurate than these right up here on top. So, folks, I mean, that is that is really it. I will, um, I'm going to go ahead and process these. I'm not going to walk through that. You don't need to, there's so many videos, but I'm going to process. We're going to look at the, uh, the errors on both the RTK and the PPK just for the sake of comparison. And I am unsure whether I will do at the end of this video, if I do not put at the end of this video, the tutorial on processing in MLID Studio, doing the same thing that I did for um, uh, EasyServe. If I do not have it in the end, I will put in the description and I will make a new video just for that, just to show this is how you're going to process your stuff in EasyServe. I'm sorry, in Inlet Studio, uh, so that people that need a link for that can go to it. So I'll either put it at the end. Um, I'm really running out of time and want to get this thing pushed out. Um, so if it's not at the end, I'll make a new one, put it in the description. If this video has been helpful, please give me a thumbs up, put some comments below, let me know what else you want to see. And again, I'm going to go ahead and just do all the ground control points tag them, and then we're just going to compare, uh, just for the sake of comparison, the RTK and the PPK. But if you need the PPK processing software, the Topo Drone software, visit dronemappingtools.com. We're the U.S. distributor for Topo Drone. We provide excellent, excellent customer service. Um, look, I mean, it's uh, we're here to help people. Yes, we want to make money. But if you're not a satisfied, if you're not knowledgeable, if you are not able to use the software, then I haven't done my job. So we will always make sure that you know what you're doing, help you through any data sets or whatever we need to do to make sure that you know how to use the software and that you get the results that you're expecting and that you need to get. And um, so again, if you need to see uh, any other type of videos, put it in the comments below. If you have any specific questions, Ask me that, and uh, if I don't know it, I'll try to find the answer. You guys take care.